Let's see what you guys think of the rematch here. All in terms right. of uh, who you think might come out ahead this time. As we said, Rogue is the only one with an actual difference in terms of roster, but seems you think it'll be enough of an advantage to come out ahead yet again. So. Well, no, but so, uh, I, if I do say so myself. If, if the, the community does say so themselves. <laughs> 64, 5%, and of course the 31 at the end. I'm not surprised at all by that, but eh, maybe Rogue's getting a bit too, too ahead of themselves. We'll get to see what happens. The match is ready to load. Ladies and gentlemen, game number one and played in number two, North America Pro League Season 9 of 2019. It's a lot of numbers there, Devin, but we're going to crunch them together as we start off with round number one in our first map. Of course, our only map because we play best of ones. You know, play six yep. rounds on attack, six rounds on defense. I the seven I, wins. I believe that is not new, other than the seven wins thing. There you go. Just reminding everyone, there I know, go. it's been a whole year since uh, some people might have watched that Pro League. I hope not. Well, since 2018. That's true, that's true. There was, there was a joke embedded in there. It's, it's a euphemism. <laughs> but people think that at some point, people are going to say, like, hey, do the other casters not know how to have fun? Like, do they not joke around? We do. What? <laughs> what? What is fun? <laughs> so that's two shields essentially banned. We've got Monty yeah. and then Blackbeard. Although it's, you know, he's kind of a half a shield, but this is uh, definitely something we've actually seen Rogue banning Blackbeard quite a bit in season eight as well. And then in this case, they just don't want to deal with Monty, which is funny because Blitz is what was so good for Mint previously. But oh man, it's like a pulse off the board as well as Maestro. Not too uncommon. These a lot of these actually kind of being common already. I would say for uh, North America and Europe in terms of bans coming out. And we saw how abusable Blackbeard was when Dark Zero and Rogue played against one another before. And I'm going to keep mentioning that match over and over again because I kid you not, I've watched that game not only live, but also another three times after it. And it's going to start on Hookah too, which mm -hmm. you were just mentioning. It's pretty exciting, and I would expect some sort of uh, Mira to be brought here. Of course, as you highlight, Monty's out, but Blitz is here, so the Punsastaka oh, is no. going he's away. Just, he's just baiting him this point but changing off the echo though interesting choice mm. as they uh, obviously don't have a maestro available either but they definitely gonna value static cams i suppose a little bit more than yes. mobile cams and one thing i want to ver verify as we start marcu can we check if shuttle is running uh, bulletproof cameras on the rook yes no hmm interesting gotta have those impacts okay fair enough i, I don't know if that's that. an actual thing because Rogue famously use a ton of uh, bulletproof cameras, especially when they're expecting smokes, which, incidentally, Dark Zero are bringing yeah. with four sets. I mean, they, to be fair, they do have the mirror available as well as the cameras. So. But what is the biggest weakness of mirror? Smoke. Ha ha. Ten seconds left. Or, or also the biggest assistant to mirror is smoke. The plan the opera. <laughs> now that you put it that way. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, though. But that door that you just saw Vertical kind of looking at is definitely a big part of most strategies in terms of attacking this. Is Most of them tend to push through that way, whether they come through that or the luggage hallway. They tend to push in to that A-bomb that you're just looking at right there that uh, Shuttle's going to be trying to defend against. We'll see, though, if he's going to be able to use that ACOG to hold them off, or it's going to end up down to C4s and smokes to try and stop the actual plant. Now, the window was notified by the players at Dark Zero. Like, okay, well, guys, watch out. There might be something. We saw one part of it broken off, so you gotta worry. Grenade's been gonna be lobbed in the back and vertical. Will eat just a tiny bit of damage there as he was sitting behind the bar. Of course, the smoke, there's no ADSs available. And again, he'll eat the second grenade, but a bit too far away. He should be able to verify here, but um, a bit of damage has been done. It's not a lot. It doesn't warrant a reset, that's for sure. The nice thing, nice thing is to scare him off that spot in terms of not being able to hide behind that, because that is a difficult spot to clear without grenades. Well, the easiest way is to clear it from below, right? You bring yeah. the buck, you bring the ash, two operators, even the jackal in this case. Operators Ooh, oh, no! Hot and cold! Beautiful shot. He's definitely hot on that one. Slash will go down, and now the rest of Dark Zero trying to hunt down the second player. Nyx fall back down, but then swiftly go back to the top floor. Continues on with the drone. It was nice to see we're live pinging him, but it was just slightly lagged enough. And he'll drone himself in, which is not something I'm super fond of, but... You see a lot of Ash players doing it anyways. They tend to need that real-time info to be able to act on it quickly, and sometimes communication just isn't robust enough to say exactly where the position is. Sometimes droning for yourself, especially if they don't see the drone, is exactly what you need, and it's exactly what Nyx just used to shoot the face right off vertical. Beautiful here, but this is what Shuttle's going to try to do. Shut down the Ash, but no, it's Nyx to hit the shots. Beautiful bit of play here. Two left alive for Rogue. Easily and Eclipse. More Goo Mines being deployed by Easily. 
still has impact in the back pocket. Pocho Man moving in. A minute five on the clock with only Eclipse alive, and that's Eclipse. We'll find one on Mint. At least slow down. Dark Zero for a second, and Eclipse will find the second one. Jarvis is on the floor. C4 thrown out, but will not connect, but the mirror window in the back is broken off, and Hookah and Hot and Cold comes in for the finisher through Hookah, threads the needle through the smoke, and will find the kill. Beautifully executed here for Dark Zero, and just Rogue not really knowing how to play against him. The fact that the Buck and the Ash both penetrated through the hallway and found the wall bang early on, Definitely, definitely hurt Rock. I gotta say, yeah, that that wall bank definitely really set things off in terms of them just not having enough manpower to be able to fight the uh, Ash of Nyx coming in as aggressively as he was, but also the fact that he was just landing his shots. He commented, and I'm droning for himself, but it was absolutely what he needed to do just to like have an idea of how he could enter from the angles in the doorway to be able to find whoever was playing behind that. And of course, they'd scared them away from playing directly behind the bar. Instead, he was kind of playing to the side and behind just a little bit. So, just landing your shots, especially the long-range shot that he got across the room into billiards was definitely the shots he needed Defenders to make. And your bombs unfortunately, they didn't have enough utility or enough manpower to stop it, and once, you don't, once you're kind of low on those, you pretty much got to expect you're going to get killed from behind from Hookah because you absolutely have to be doing exactly what Eclipse was doing, which is focusing on the Aqua side, unless you know you've killed enough of, of them as well, but... Not enough early kills from Rogue there kind of left him straggling. And that's the problem. When there's no refrags and you can use them to your advantage, it really becomes complicated for you to come back in a position where there's multiple angles where you can get pushed by. And in that case, there's hookah, there's multiple windows, there's the hallway, there's cool vibe stairs. There's so many positions where you just have to worry about that. You know, at some point, hey, we're low on manpower, whatever. We're just going to try to hold it this way. And if it doesn't work, it's all right. We, you know, we'll do it next time. And that's the nice thing about trading as a defender is if you're an equal man count, you're still in the advantage because you've got time pressure on your side. So if you can at least trade as a defender, you're in a good position. Fortunately, that was definitely not the case last round. But now they're going down to blue and sunrise bar. So it's going to work a little bit differently. But it also means some downward destruction coming out from hot cold. Oh, nice. But then the, the clash should make things spicy. Indeed. And I'm uh, very interested to see how easily runs this one here. Maybe uh, as um, you know, having a player to support him in the back. No, he's just gonna stand forward and push the buck back. Because of course, the clash isn't as great as she was before, but at least it'll force Capitao out and Hot and Cold will find the kill. Vertical just kind of stuck here between the doorway and the CCE shield. And that's there's a second kill, shuttles down. And I'm not sure where the Jekyll is playing, maybe from the top floor. I mean, the Twitch of Jarvis here popped one of those mirror windows, which should leave Eclipse in a pretty bad spot. Easily will have to fall back and worry about multiple angles, and Rogue, having opened up the entirety of the blue bar, can't really stick there. They'll have to Attackers keep as much manpower as possible Attackers inside of this uh, Sunrise bar. And see Dark Zero just home in. They're trying to find some information on their opponents. One kill and two kills for Slash, though, as he runs in. Can he find the third? No, a bit too greedy. Jarvis will shut him down. It's at least the fuser spotted on the floor and information given back. But where is Eclipse? He's in the main lobby. And we'll try to go into CCTV or in the security room just to try and put even more pressure on his this opponents. This is a lot of off-site play when the only oh, one on-site The drone spotted him. The drone spotted oh, him. Oh, no. They know exactly where he is. This, the drone was lit up in red. And that's, uh, that's his cue to the get the hell out of there. Yeah, this is definitely bomb. the case where he's... Maybe just overextending himself with no one left really on site yet. I think he's just hoping to go for at least enough kills, get back to site, and then burn time at that point. But when they had a minute and a half left when this started to be uh, kind of favored towards Dark Zero, still looking like the case because no one else has fallen yet. Nyx still has health. That's all you need. Uh, this is the problem. When you're relying on your Clash to do the fighting, that's definitely not a great position. Now, we'll spot the Jackal as he dove into the site, but the Ash of Nyx is already in the Sunrise Bar. Diffuser's already been set. Yeah, sure, you can dodge all the bullets and eat them all up, but there's a certain point where you can't <laughs> try to shoot with the shield. I don't, know, I don't know how effective that'll be, but there you go. Jarvis will clean up easily, and Dark Zero in complete control. I know there's a team that is very... <laughs> <laughs> Can we just take a second? <laughs> oh my god, that... <laughs> I'll get you next time! Yeah. Sucks the seal, there's no hold bars game. <laughs> oh my god. It's uh, it's unfortunate that, Clash, or, uh, that Slash got as greedy as he did, mm -hmm. because taking those two kills and going back to a, another position where, I don't know, they wouldn't have known he was He coming. had the diffuser! He had yeah. it on the floor! 
I think he was just hoping to punish them enough for not doing anything about him, but two kills and the Diffuser is such a good advantage to have. They absolutely could have played it because they could have brought the Clash in there Attackers to watch the Diffuser. The Had they done so, the Clash can do so without real repercussions for the most part. They did. Keep Slash somewhere in the vicinity so he can strike based off the information that easily is able to relay, and then you don't have uh, Eclipse having to rotate off site the way he did, getting caught by the drone. It was just... They, they played their hand overly strong in terms of like aggression. And I understand, like they wanted to play the aggression and try and catch them off guard. And they did so, but then continued to do so when, well, they were on guard at that point. Just, uh, I don't know, not the smartest of plays after capitalizing on that. Now, this is the big change yeah. though, Rogue. They bring the echo, right? Easily has played a pretty good echo in the past. And this might sig signal more how do you say, more technical gameplay, staying Attackers more in and around the site. Standard. You'll have Attackers your standard rotations that are held Attackers by your teammates. You're not going to go way Attackers off of the site, yeah. but it does require you to have some support of your teammates. You can't just go, quote unquote, balls to the wall and. Yeah. Well, the nice thing is, too, they'll have the cameras upstairs from Eclipse to be able to have some idea where the top down attack is coming and be able to work against that. Eclipse is probably going to be on the realm as well. Like Slick Flicks, he's doing right now is he's got all the cameras finally up. And then you've got Easley's drones both downstairs. Pojaman will fight. Oh, uh, man. No, that is the definitely. I mean, at least the drones are both up, but that is not a good start there. Again, just getting picked off early. The, just the shots coming out from Dark Zero. I got to credit their droning has got to be a, a big oh, part yes. of this in terms of catching them in compromising positions, but then also Dark Zero being confident enough to be in positions to execute on that. And such an underrated thing, the communication alongside managing your drones, managing the amount of drones that you have, aka your drone economy, but also having a player in around to capitalize on the information that you got. It's just wonderful team play from Dark Zero. Definitely something that Rogue were not really expecting, at least the way that you look at it so far. Well, they were hoping to be able to play a lot more free form on defense and stay more flexible on this map. But it is absolutely not working. They're going to have to change up what they're doing if they lose this round as well. Well, Mint uh, is in on the Jackal, and he's going to take control of the blue bar, which puts them right on the cusp of the attack on Kitchen. So they'll have some sort of entryway to use, uh, vertical and eclipse, as well as shuttle, actually. Playing on the top floor, shuttle will find one. That's Nyx down and take it out. The Infuser, yet again, will be held by Rogue, this time on Cool Vibe Stairs. That's a important kill, though, because Nyx has been able to do a lot of damage later in the round as well. Indeed, and having the, the diffuser compromised in such a position is definitely not something you want to really have as an attacking team. You just have to go and get it back, but you can't just go up the stairs and try to clear it. I gotta wonder why Nyx was even carrying it. I, I completely agree. Your this spearhead shouldn't really be doing it. Well, so far they seem to be a little bit stalled out, and this is actually a huge advantage to Rogue, who had been struggling with this phase of the uh, attack specifically, and going over aggressive, but and finding one on Slash is just going to put them right into the site with no one to contest it. And with no Diffuser to really follow up, that is the real problem. Three players alive from Rogue, but they have cameras, they have the two Yokai drones that even though the Echo is dead, they'll still be able to watch this. And look at the Goo Mines doing work here. Shuttle can just stay in as long as he'd like. Smokes to thrown in the back just in case somebody would like to push in from the back and they'll get the finisher. Hot and cold will get the kill and the diffuser 3v1 is Eclipse. We'll have to rotate in, but again, you leave the wall soft just in case you got a retake. And Eclipse even through the wall will make it happen. 10 seconds left on the clock here as they have to go for the finisher and Jarvis again dives with the F2 and will take down Eclipse. Beautiful play again from Dark Zero, salvaging the round from their own mistake of leaving the diffuser in the hands of the Ash of Nyx just to charge on it. Well, getting site control is definitely what changed things. They were definitely stalling out quite a bit, but once they had an idea of what was going on in site control and then getting the kill onto the mirror player, they were just able to charge on in because, again, they were overextended outside of the site. Eclipse has been uh, kind of the key defender most of the time later in the round, but in this case, he was, again, off site. Now, they've been changing sites every single time and rotating, but this time they're finally going to re repeat a site because while there are four viable sites on here, you know, it's still a lot of teams have one that just don't find uh, as appealing in terms of the way they want to do the defensive strategies. In this Defenders case, it seems to be Penthouse, which is not a huge surprise attackers. despite the bands uh, working out somewhat in the favor of that because Blackbeard, for example, is banned. Mirror is available. They have some things that kind of work to their advantage, yeah, but just still not wanting to deal with it. And Mint actually sticking on the Blitz here should make this interesting for this round because now they can be extra aggressive against the Roamers of Rogue. You know what I think is the most interesting change in this round for Rogue, the Mute. 
They've been struggling because Dark Zero have been able to get a beat on them every single time with their drones, yeah, right? Absolutely. So what does Rogue do? You know, you know what? We're just gonna get some jammers. Seconds left before insertion. And we're gonna set them down. And we're gonna make sure that these drones have the hardest Five time possible figuring out where we are. Yeah. It's a very logical change. And I want to see it work just to be like, hey, here's a, yet another reason to play Mute. Because right now, Mute is in a perfect spot. Some would say a bit too good of a spot, but still in a pretty darn good spot to do many, many things. You see so many of these Mute Jammers put upstairs. And Vertical even going for the early peak here. He'll, he won't find anybody by the Lamborghini doorway, but that's just... It's that's worth a try. Goes. You can get away with it. Well, the upside, too, is the Mute Jammers will... Potentially jam uh, Mint's flash if they happen to be in the vicinity, although that's yeah. unlikely to be the case. But oh, it does have a J clip. <laughs> flash me now. Oh. Yeah, definitely, flash now. Definitely something that a lot of people forget about just because it doesn't happen very often. But like you said, the, the uh, Mute Jammer will definitely help. But at the same time, when you've got someone that can walk around as a mobile drone with a shield on their face, maybe it's not the right counter. But, and again, another soft wall bang there that is going to down easily and finished off by Mint. Easily not so hot right now, that's for sure. Now, one thing I do want to highlight is that quite a few teams have been running Blitz or Monty plus a Finca. Finca has been actually a pretty big pick for a lot of teams. Hanukkah final will go down as Eclipse will thread it and at least find the first one in the vertical with the second kill. So finally, this is Rogue at the helm and it's been a while. Nick shut down early on and also losing a technical operator, but they still need to take out Mint, which is definitely an operator to fear at any point in time during the round. Well, the plus side is they do have, oh, I was gonna say the ability to stun him and then hit him wow. with C4s, but the shots from above were something he just didn't anticipate. And this round looking very definitely going the way of Rogue for once here, as uh, Jarvis and Pocho are gonna have to fight up against a lot of utility and a lot of firepower, just Eclipse, the only one to even take a damage outside of Easily's death. So they're definitely slowing down at this point to do some droning, and those Mute Jammers definitely going to benefit as potentially stalling out Jarvis' drone because it can't jump to try and get around those. Very true, and I don't really know if there's anything on the set. I know there's three set on the top floor by the by the penthouse. I'm not sure if they put anything around this position here in the kitchen to deny information. Of course, Slash is on his own yokai drones and should have at least one set up in a correct position. He still take a bit of damage and actually get down from the Capitown and quickly, very swiftly revived by Vertical, take extra damage as well from Pojo Man, as you just saw one asphyxiating bolt going into the back. Echo has remaneuvered, but Pojo Man is ready for him. Slash will go down. Pojo Man pushing yet again against the Mute and will find it. That's two kills now for the Poge. Jarvis low on health though, and it'll get shut down instantly. Vertical and Shuttle are ready to clean it all up and Rogue will put their first round on the board. Definitely, finally they're repeating a site and then incrementing on what they're doing instead of, or iterating rather, rather than just changing sites. Now that they've got the information though and the iteration there, they can start to go back to the other sites because they've got that information. Of course, they can't play Kitchen again. So they'll go back to Hookah, the original site. Now that they've got a bit better idea how the attack potentially will come down from Dark Zero. But of course, a lot of that depended on Nick's landing his shots early on. So if they can just stall out Nick's a bit in terms of being able to maintain better control and potentially stop Mint here, however, they won't necessarily have the advantage of being able to attack him from above this time if he's on the same floor as them because the bombsite is now upstairs. Of course, that, that was kind of a situational thing either way, but they're going to have to find a more direct way to deal with this confrontation. I mean, he might, may just be downstairs at first trying to clear the floor for them, especially if they have any trouble joining for any reason. So there's no mute in there to stop them this time on that, so they're just going to be able to clear fairly effectively. No echo this time as well. So those T4s, I think, can be a little bit harder to land because you can't, for example, stun him with the yokai to give yourself an opportunity to be able to do a little bit more against him, but that's not a common thing you're going to see happen all that often anyways, just because landing that shot on a full charge, you know, steamrolling blitz, yeah. not easy to do. That's that's why he's got the elite skin on, the Panza what do you say? It's Sterka? Five or if you can't pronounce it, I'm not even yeah. going to think about attempting Because I know the A with double dot is like, uh, because yeah. you say das gefällt mir nicht, which means like, I don't like this. But this is a bit odd. And that sounds like a useful phrase. It, <laughs> I never got to use it myself. But uh, yeah, Min here, of course, on the Blitz. We'll get to see how this works out. I'm, I'm very perplexed by the choice of now Habana, though I do understand that Dark Zero realizing that, hey, Mira's available, Penthouse is definitely a possible uh, site to play, maybe we don't really need any Heart Breacher. Now, yeah. of course, Coastline is, I believe, the only map where you can play with no Heart Breach and it'll be completely...
completely fine. I guess Consulate if you're really confident yeah. on your garage attack. But even then, having Habana is fine. I think teams like Empire, for example, will run without a Heart Breacher, and they did last uh, well, a couple of day, nights ago when they were playing against Ents. They only had like around uh, half of their rounds were actually ran with a Thermite. Uh, Slash will take quite a bit of damage in the back as they'll have to stay close to the cooler. And, uh, well, the Blitz of Mint here is just getting ready to push. He's got two smokes, of course, to play with. And Pojo Man has all the utility. Look, it, it didn't hit the mirror, unfortunately, for Pojo Man. This tarp angle combined with the Firebolt there was a good opportunity for Mint to push in, but there is at least one remaining. Just because he, they can cut off anyone's ability to rotate in, it's the hole on, under the stairs that's going to be his biggest problem. Fortunately, Pojo couldn't finish off the kill, so he's going to try and Firebolt it. Nope, it looks like him and so Slash and Easily both going to get away with not dying. So Easy, far. Easily still on the floor. He can get picked up, but that is a yeah. very difficult angle. And no C4, either. unfortunately, it'll miss, and Shuttle will get the kill on Mint. Jarvis with one. I'll try to fight the impact grenade, almost taking him out, and it's two for two as it turns into a 3v3, and even 3v1 fight, as I believe Vertical is down on the floor. Eclipse will find the kill on Jarvis. There you go, finisher on the smoke. 2v1 as both players are fairly full on health. Pojo Man will even try to fight with his M9, but cannot connect the rounds. Diffuser in the hands of Pojo Man. Now we'll have to go for the Diffuser. Hear him going for in for the plant, and they should be able to spot the Valkyrie here. If she can deny this Diffuser plant, no, it does not work out. Han Cold still alive and ready with a shotgun in hand. The Skeleton Key should be able to finish off here. No, Eclipse instantly finding the head. 1v1. Pojo Man all the way in the back. Diffuser set on the floor, and the drone has been taken out. This has to turn into a fight. Unfortunately, he reveals his position. Eclipse fires, and he'll land the shots. The Fuser will get taken out, and there you go, Rogue. Beautiful cleanup from Eclipse, the comeback that'll win them the round, and put it at a 3-2. Still, though, advantage for Dark Zero. I gotta say that using the Skeleton Key, while it was a great idea if Eclipse pushed close, he was smart enough to swing wide, and Capital firing that pre-fire absolutely cost him the round because he had the advantage. You saw Eclipse looking the wrong direction. He couldn't see far enough over to be confident that no one was out there. Had no utility to be able to find that out. Had to just take a chance at that point. Because of that, Capital absolutely could have played that. But just firing that shot, giving away his position. Eclipse was absolutely on top of landing his headshots despite his one missed shot from the stairs. Eclipse seems to be at the heart of every single one of these clutch attempts so far. You can say he's always able to eclipse his opponents in all these fights. Unfortunately, not enough of the early rounds, though. But Penthouse finally coming out here. So they're going to try something different. This might be what they need to kind of surprise and bring it back to a tie. We rarely see any ties here in the middle now that it's possible. We still have two ties. That's right. Because <laughs> we're wearing I always have to make that joke. I'm sorry. I, it's mandatory now. I don't know. One day I'll be a dad, so i got to practice. So that's a warning to everyone out there. So, Penthouse, this is very yeah. interesting. Not seeing a lot of changes other than the fact that we're finally seeing Vertical now on the Vigil. Should be very interesting. And no Mira. Yeah. That, I think, raises a lot of questions. Ten seconds to go. I think, you know, this is a team that is a lot more confident with Penthouse defenses with no Mira than a lot of other teams out there. Though. Even though they were a team, that, I don't know how much we can trust Ranger, Attackers right? But, like, on record, you yeah. know what, this who's, site... Who's not, our favorite bomb site? Not as easy to play without a mirror. And you know what? I get it, but I kind of am bamboozled here. It's definitely a strategy if they just want to be able to fight the angles they want to fight in terms of just having intel. And Shuttle, again, going for a peek, but not with a dock this time, just iron sights out a window. And he does see the uh, the shadow of the jackal. So th that actually sounds like a movie like, title. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say it. Oh, man. Do you read my mind, Devin? I try not to when I can help it. <laughs> It's, it's a very dark place, to say the least. Uh, a dark zero. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Oh, one camera spotted. Yeah. It is fairly out in the open. There is a second one, of course, uh, uh, setting outside by the DJ booth. That was just a decoy, right? Yes, indeed. Indubitably. All right, well, good use of the uh, remote breaches there to open up the floor because they don't want to use any grenades to do that, and don't want to risk Hot and Cold going in there too far and using a Skeleton Key up on the floor, but that is a bit of utility used uh, that could potentially be used to uh, open up some other, open up maybe some walls, if there's other soft walls they might be want to use, say the VIP side, opening up into the hallway, which they could still do with bullets. 
or if they wanted to clear any barbed wire with those breaches, now they don't have the opportunity anymore. So this is going to depend on this window pressure being a big part of this, and of course that's what the Capitao is for, but yeah, also the angle the from hot and cold is a nice one here, trying to fight a little bit differently in terms of also wanting to deal with anyone be behind the dresser at some point. It's definitely a position where if you had a Blackbeard, uh, it would uh, would be a great spot to be in. Which, of course, is why it's banned. Indeed, and Zofia is also a pretty uh, potent operator on this one. Also, the Capital kind of fills some sort of role close to her. I like to say they, you know, they kind of are side grades to one another when it comes to utility. Interesting to see Vertical playing so far on site here with Slash, the one playing Eclipse's role this time, and Eclipse, the one on dock. So he's actually going to be able to fight some of those longer angles, probably going to be playing back in theater. Which, uh, no, he's not doing at the moment. He's actually playing a, a dock far roam. Make sure that the other side of VIP stays clear. Oh, Nick's fairly low on health. That's out on the balcony. Vertical pushing him up. But Pojaman will find Slash and take him out. That's a Valkyrie remove. Not sure if she already used her uh, C4, but that's oh, definitely... Oh, 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 vertical. Beautiful play. And you see the vertical play as well from Hot and Cold. Trying to find the angle on him. Oh. And there you go. Taken out instantly. Hot and Cold definitely on fire here. And the Eager in the back is... Dropped a bit lower on health, but Eclipse was able to put him back up pretty much on uh, full. Uh, shuttle as well, ready to help out. As Mint will come in from below. This is definitely something that they require. I like that shield as well with the rotate hold. That's something we saw from Zig on Liquid work very effectively when he was playing Doc. Very true. And he can play that position for a long time. And almost the whole magazine expended is still a trade. Five seconds left on the clock. And the push has to come in. Fire in for, from the pistol, hot and cold, as he goes in for the fight against the dock. Zero seconds on the clock. And the defense of Rogue will just win it off of time. Very well timed here. Good comeback. Mm -hmm. Three to go into the second half, so that's, that's a good way to start it. I mean, the only still, other tie we've had at the half, Secret G2. So and far. we know how that turned out. So In one team winning. Yeah. Well, I think that was the only predictable part of that. Fair enough. We'll see, though, as things go now. It seems like Rogue has warmed up quite a bit. And usually the team that, that does poorly in the beginning that warms up after that very often has a tendency to kind of swing and kind of landslide that uh, into some serious play. And, I mean, now it's got it with three rounds in a row for Dark Zero, now three th rounds in a row for Rogue. They were kind of close rounds, but we did start to see them start to get a bit more confident and also not overextending themselves nearly as much as Jackers well as doing things to try and counter what Dark Zero was trying to push on them. And Mint Blitz just not doing enough to really change the equation. No. So definitely seeming like Rogue on a good foot, but now they have to go on the attack. So we'll see Nyx to be the one to actually play the Vigil this time. And the first castle coming out here, this time from Pojo Man. And they are going to be playing on Bar, which is blue and sunrise here. So it should be interesting to see how that castle barricades factors into this. They may use it to kind of help secure some of the uh, kitchen area potentially, or to be able to stop any of the doorways. You see the doorway there into Sunrise Bar being slowed down, so that way they have to deal with that. They may reinforce the walls as well, potentially. I imagine they might have actually from the other side even that we just can't see, but nice open shots there into the uh, blue bar. That's going to be interesting to see if they end up having to drop courtyard if anyone tries to plant behind the blue bar, which is a common thing to do. People kind of come in there, sneak in through the doorway, try and plant where you just saw uh, Jarvis, or, yeah, Jarvis run through there. So... See how it comes down though, a lot of holes being opened to try and help make sure that doesn't happen so that way they can play someone. There you see the uh, bulletproof camera as well. I gotta imagine that was probably from Jarvis on the dock bringing that out. Although it could have been from Nyx, just very unlikely. He's most likely with the impacts. It is a completely uh, soft wall though behind it, so you gotta be careful. And in the meantime, Vertical will try to push it from the back. The castle barricade will give it all away. And there you go, that is a bulletproof camera that was run by Jarvis himself. So there you go. The Zofia will send in one Gajmot, and they should be able to rush him down. Will they find the angle? Yes, they will. Vertical finds it, and that's one. Nix the second one to go down as well to the Commando of Easley. Greatly played here on the attacking side for Rogue so far. Two players essential here on the squad that have been taken out. Interesting enough, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, but you're playing a dock and you're roaming with them. That's really bad. No, actually, it is all about a mindset. It's not really about the operator. Keep that in mind. And the hot and cold will drop. I believe that was uh, explosive. I'm not sure there was an impact grenade that was uh, thrown in, but hot and cold is down on the floor as well. Should be able to pick him up. Vertical will find a bit of extra information here on the uh, cool vibe stairs, but can't really move into it and capitalize on anything just yet. It requires his teammates to be in better positions and maybe even someone pushing in from the top side. Eclipse will get one. You see the buck. Firing in from the side, easily just jumps on in from the window 
and now they're all gonna converge to try and fight against Mint. All five players in and Vertical will find the last. Mint is down on the floor and taken out and Rogue a flawless round here on the attack on the double bars. A lot of that was good droning. You saw even the Doc, for example, he thought he was in a great position, had the coverage from the bullet for camera, but guess what? You saw the red ping. Vertical came right around the corner swinging. It was a little bit, I want to say kind of sloppy in terms of the way he kind of swung a little bit wide, was aimed a little bit low in terms of trying to get a kill, but absolutely secured the kill. And the important thing is he wasn't, yes, he wasn't able to get a great angle on Mint, but he kept him completely in position on the cool vibe stairs while the rest of the team was executing around that. And then once it came down to it, guess what? The rest of the team's dead. They know exactly where Mint was standing at that point, either on cool vibes or upstairs. All they had to do was hear the shots from him. They absolutely knew how to execute on that. And Mint really didn't have much of a chance at that point other than maybe just a little bit of luck in his gunfights. So good droning on their part as well. So we're seeing droning be, uh, you know, kind of it, as expected, a huge component of uh, winning a lot of these rounds in terms of being able to make the kills that you want to make because, well, again, the, the map being kind of the circle, it is, you're limited in your rotation capability unless you want to jump into the courtyard, which we saw, for example, Eclipse doing previously. It's tricky to cut across and surprise someone. Once you get droned, you tend to get trapped and pinched, especially when they have good control like the way they've been doing a lot of these executes, but now the advantage on Rogue's side. Mm -hmm on the attack first. So if they go the three rounds in a row that we saw, for example, from uh, Dark Zero, then, then Dark Zero, of course, would have to go three rounds in a row yeah, again to flip that round and end in a tie. But I think it's uh, so far it's swinging a Five bit to Rogue's side. Let's we'll see the execute on this particular play, though. But a lot of cheeky peeks here potentially coming out early on. They might actually go for a peek upstairs again. Just so many spawn peek attempts from both of these teams. That is. Uh, some some en fuego cojones here from uh, Dark Zero. Yeah, the double rook, doc, spawn peaks. Not to mention Nick's trying to mix things up a little bit. It's like literally every rank game. Yeah, it's. Just, I mean, y if you're doing it, it's because it works. That, that's true. Actually, I have to say this for a second. Everybody's like, oh, but they're playing as if it's ranked. That's why they're winning. It doesn't matter. They're using what works from rank. Hundred percent. As long as it works in a competitive setting, it's absolutely uh, on the table. Yeah, there's a difference between a not so smart to play, and then one that is, I don't know, very, very ballsy, something that shouldn't realistically work, but still does because of the coordination that it required to actually make it work. There's two things that I, I feel should very much be distinct in the minds of everyone. Funny part is none of them have worked so far, but they've been continuously doing them just on that off chance because there's so little punishment that can happen back against them in most of those. Might as well have used them if you can just to I don't know, roll the dice a little bit hope you catch someone who uh, gets a little too comfortable. But at this point, I think everyone's dealt with it enough, as you mentioned, and ranked to uh, be a little more comfortable not getting picked by those. So we'll see. You know, rounds or match not over yet. Could still see it happen. But good control here coming out from Shuttle early and then droning to see what's going on above him. It looks like he might have spotted some people here potentially. Be looking for it behind the bar. Oh, lost the drone, but I think he has an idea where it's going to be at. And you see a ping come out there. Vertical needing to capitalize on this a little bit to try and approach towards theater side as well. Looks like he knows this could be a bit of a live ping, but there we go. Again, the kill on the Jarvis from a live ping coming out from a drone. So that's good coordination. That's communication, too. That's not just about droning. That's about saying, hey, ping for me right now. We saw them also doing that on Dark Zero, trying to do that for Nyx. So it seems like the Ash players benefiting off both their own droning as well as teammates droning early on. Well, in the meantime, Nyx is gathering information on the hallway camera, default cam, and he's just playing the Ella, which which means, you know, at that range, hitting the shots are a bit more complicated, but still, Ella is in a pretty good spot, in my opinion. She can really do whatever is required. Now, it's smart that Dark Zero holding off the flank as best as possible, and yet again, this is copy-paste what we saw in the match that happened a couple months ago. As you saw there, easy kill from the Mira, threading the long range shot. My god, Pojaman beautifully played. He'll take down Eclipse as the Zofia was about to execute. Slash flashing himself, but easily in the meantime, trying to clear out any utility of this set by the defense. Shuttle get Pojoman as Nyx will rotate back on the site. And you see the wall even up top is not fully reinforced. 12 seconds on, on the clock and the push has to come in. Slash is watching any rotations from the big window will go in for the diffuser plant. Shuttle is downstairs defending against any potential C4 play. Mint will find one, but they all rush right in and they'll deny the diffuser. Easily down on the floor in Dark Zero. That is, that is the definition of, guys, he's there. Zero, zero on the clock. Let's go.
Absolutely, just charged in with the right timing. And it was just the fact that uh, you saw Vertical take the shots and then go prone. Unfortunately for him, he was trying to, uh, basically if he landed his kill and finished his kill behind that little mini bar, he would have been able to be in a good position still to defend against that. But the fact that he didn't, the fact that he didn't finish the kill meant he had to go prone so he didn't just get you know, fired back upon. In doing so, he gave his teammate up, unfortunately, went to stand back up to go for that kill. And that was unfortunately the time when the L had rushed into the room. And it was all on timing. But like you said, at 0 on the clock, the timing is absolutely in the favor of the defenders in the sense that they know exactly what you're going to be doing. It doesn't matter if you die at that point. You're like, yeah. you know what? I saved the run. That's all that matters. As long as you get them off the diffuser, mm -hmm. that's all you have to do, and then you win. KD, absolutely worthless if you end up losing at the end. Yeah. But either way, that is going to stop any kind of streak now. So there was four rounds in a row from Rogue, and that was the most of the streak we've seen so far. But now we're actually seeing a little bit of a back and forth, so things should change up. But then we go down to Kitchen. And we were talking about, I was talking about earlier how Rogue were kind of switching bomb sites regardless of whether they won or lost, and of course having switched them when they won. In this case, Dark Zero finally having to switch when they won, but they did win their yeah, first defense on bar, but they decided to try it and then switch off of it. So we will likely see a return Five to bar at left. some point. But now that they've won Hookah, they're not actually going to do that. They're just going to go to Kitchen instead. We'll see if they keep kind of Penthouse as a pocket strat the way Rogue did as well, though. It's the nice thing about having four viable bomb sites is you mm -hmm. can have that happen because Rogue did play all four. Very true. And this is the beauty of Coastline. Really, it explains why we've had this map played so much in the past year. Yeah. Well, it's good to see that Villa has also managed to uh, creep up there. We tend to have that. There's always at least a season of lag for a map, it seems. Uh, Villa kind of very quickly, actually. Uh, well, we kind of put it in the map pool, and it kind of we have a small enough map pool that kind of had to get played. Yeah, yeah. and so. I think uh, people are starting to really figure out a lot of the details in yeah. Villa, and we'll definitely see a lot more of it this season. Hundred percent. There, that is that is a foregone conclusion, my friend. Yeah. So, so again on the attack this time, they're going to take top floor control to attack down. Yeah, checking for potential goo mine. Uh, there's nothing will be spotted. Just open up the door, take control of that uh, hallway. And it's, of course, very important. Hey, you, what's what's the, the mindset of playing Coastline? It's very easy. Hey, we're attacking the bottom floor. Let's take the top floor. We're attacking bottom bottom floor. Let's take, the let, you know, take the top floor. Attacking the top floor. We'll go from the bottom floor and, and there's clear out the flanks. To attacking the top floor. There's people who attack from the opposite corner or people exactly. who attack from directly above the site, like the way Rogue is doing right now. It really depends on if you, how you droned and what you find and how you're going to try to capitalize. Or if there's three people set up in theater and you want to fight them early on. Uh -huh. And that is, that's basically what guides you through this. Of course, there's been no Jaeger played. As the first grenade will miss, the second one will be dropped in the back. will bounce around, but still not find anyone. All drones been taken out as uh, shuttle by watching the uh, the hallway from the penthouse. Still hasn't found anyone. Is well, at least the two grenades cleared out that possible position as someone being there. Very true. There is one reinforcement in here, and Han Colt has one spot. As he oh, oh finds it, Jarvis get the kill on shuttle and have to worry about the window for just a second in case anyone would like to go for a cheeky peek. As you see, all of these punch holes have been set up. Which means you gotta be careful. Vertical moving in, and he does not spot Jarvis crouching on the floor. Eclipse will get fired upon for just a bit in the hallway. Flash will be thrown on the side, but no one's gonna push this. Jarvis will take the advantage in the moment, and no! The Ash of Vertical not looking in, and both will go down. Jarvis with yet another kill. That's three for him in the round. Slash, last man alive in this four feet, well, four to four. Rogue and Dark Zero looking to get that fifth round up on the board. Hello. Oh my god, there you go. Hey, that's yeah, one. Oh, the timing though. Had he done it earlier, he would have found the other oh. one. Close. But no cigar. Well, Jarvis definitely having a much better round that time than he had in previous rounds. Didn't get droned in live ping to get killed. And the fact that he was able to stay alive in the hallway and actually using that big open hole there made such a difference for that round because they were just not able to deal with him. You saw, for example, Vertical come around the corner completely fixated on trying to finally mm -hmm. kill Jarvis. That's what got him shot in the back of and the head. Yeah, not realizing that, hey, there's actually a dude right there. Absolutely. And that theater defense, the fact that they were able to hold it as long as they were, the grenades didn't find anyone, even without, as you mentioned, the Jaeger, which is finally being picked this time by Jarvis instead of Doc, which is uh, being taken up by Hot and Cold, although there could be a six pick. But the fact that they're able to do that and then get Jarvis in the hallway to be able to fight that from an angle, I'm not sure if that was bucked open or if it was a impact nade that opened that hole. I'm assuming impact nade. But either way, that worked so well 
for them to have that crossfire because Rogue were completely dependent on taking theater because they can't leave it. It's just above the bomb site. They cannot leave that open. And, and they were forced into so many fights they should not have taken at that point. The flank needed to happen, really, is what it came down to. They needed to come through luggage. They needed and to come no, around behind. That's the thing. No one came from luggage. And that's where a hard breacher potentially would be helpful if they had the back of theater reinforced, for example. Then uh, you could get in. Say a Maverick even would have been useful to be able to poke a few holes there. Had you been able to do that silently, they wouldn't have expected it. Uh, assuming true. Jarvis wasn't in the hallway at the time to see you approach. Yeah, it, th there were two people in the hallway. Yeah. The wall in the back was still soft. There were only punch holes around it. So even, it uh, even soft, you can actually do it a little bit quieter very by true. using Maverick than by punching it. That is very true. Five seconds remaining. Still. We'll, we'll see, though, how things go if it goes to that side around again. But we will go back to a bar because they can't, because they play two other sides. So this is definitely the site they want to be playing the most. Despite, uh, they, oh no, I'm sorry, they didn't win it. What am I saying? They, they won the other two sites, so they have to go back to this one because they don't want to play Penthouse yet. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was thinking about that the other way around. Just because they've, they've been so voluntarily switching sites on both teams. It's as if they have the choice. Yeah. It's nice when you do have that choice. There's definitely something that is, uh, attackers never have a choice on bomb site, and they can continue to repeat to attack the same bomb site even if they win it, whereas defenders, if they win, they're the ones who are forced to change. So it's interesting. The asymmetry in this game's design is definitely uh, very interesting. We well, get to play the, the other half on the other side, right? So there's a certain point where the madness has to end. That's true. We'll, we'll see how this attack goes. You see Dark Zero are fairly pushed up here trying to fight two angles. Being called, hopefully here. Hot, oh no, oh, Hot gives away his position. Hmm, that's, that's not a great spot. And you see already, I believe, the ash on the floor trying to peek. Oh, there you go. Fire in and Vertical will go down. No follow-ups and Hot and Cold is able to scurry away with his life. There's still the Jaeger holding off on the opposite end here. Should have been heard here. But will he attack the Sofia? Yes, he will and win it out. Jarvis nails the shot and Eclipse will go down. Now in the meantime, Rogue have penetrated the defenses inside of the site. Stash will go in for the finisher and there you go. That's what they needed but easily is the last man in. He'll find one. Still at around 60% health. Players will have to peek in from the kitchen as they, this is the position that they were in from the beginning of the round. All three have to come in from one angle and there's so much time and diffuser in hand. Dark Zero can just stand here and they still have, I believe, an impact where you can fire in from the bot. There you go. They have an impact grenade, a lot of time, and that's exactly what Mint's gonna try to do. He'll try to impact and have some sort of angle to look on down and easily as Jarvis will win it out. Wow, hitting the shots here perfectly with the 416, and that'll be all she wrote for this round. Wow, Dark Zero. Match point now. Indeed. The only way for Rogue to bring this one back is to tie it 6-6, six, six, and which will be our first tie ever if it does happen, at least in this season. Well, what's going on so far, it seems that Rogue are continuing to attack primarily from one entry point. And in doing so, what's happening is you're seeing Dark Zero just bunched up fighting angles. And Rogue are just losing a lot of those gunfights. You saw the one, for example, where it was just just a millisecond too late on clicking the face, maybe click just to the side a little bit because that lost that fight and lost even more. Dark Zero just playing, even, even when it was Jaeger versus an ACOG, and when he's not with the ACOG anymore, still winning the fight against it is just, despite the advantages sometimes Rogue is having, they're getting a little predictable in the way that they're pushing in, and they're not really rotating around to adjust for that. You saw a bar attack finally towards the end of there. Okay, Once enough people have been killed, they finally gave up on the kitchen. But it was too little too late. They lost too many people at that point. And the droning maybe not as effective because, well, you're not catching a lot of roamers. This feels like exactly like what we saw in the first half where Rogue finally realized we're overextending ourselves. Let's put more people on site. Let's fight from the site. And it worked. Dark Zero doing the exact same thing just much wow, earlier in their defensive rounds is putting them at match point and ahead by two points because of it. So just much smarter. We'll see, though, if Rogue are able to adapt and maybe just coordinate a much, much more efficient push. They are going to have someone to help clear with the roam a little bit easier if there is one, potentially, as Slash is going to have his ability to make those phone calls with Logic Bomb. But it looks like they're setting up outside in the hallway again to defend this. We'll see if it works Attackers yet again. The They're definitely setting up a bit of defense the for Theater, expecting Rogue to go for a similar push when they're attacking for a different site. I'd like to highlight that uh, Rogue played on Coastline last time against Space Station Attackers Gaming at the U.S. National the Semifinals. That was game three, and it ended up with a 6 4 victory for Rogue. They ended up getting four rounds on their de defensive side which is, it, this was running the old setup of, you know, play five rounds on defense, five rounds on attack. Um, 
So if you compare it to here, it it still wasn't too much of a um, of a game towards the side of Rogue. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that was with Vertical on uh, on board, as that was uh, mm -hmm. somewhat of his debut. And they also played it against Sinister in the quarterfinals. Uh, keep that in mind. Six to victory on uh, this map as well for the Rogue Boys. So we'll see though. They now, did this lose this to, to Norengo. That was that was hilarious. Yeah, that was a that was a, a very good day for APAC, to say the least. Yes. Speaking of which, hopefully everyone caught the uh, APAC qualifiers, and if not, go back and watch those vods. It was yeah. very exciting. We ha we we would like to congratulate Mantis FPS, the Spoiler Korean team. Alert. The Korean. Hey, it's been a couple of days, dude. You got you got to you know we, we were watching it. Got to catch up at some point. Got to catch up. There you go. It's like mayonnaise in here. Mantis FPS, of course, our South Korean team are heading to Montreal, Montreal, for the sixth invitational. Can't wait to see the boys there. But Shuttle here is uh, peeking in, trying to find and see someone through the holes. Because you know what? I think those work both ways, as yeah. they say. Absolutely. But it did force him out of the room, and now he's going to have to use his windows from the outside of the hallway. Thankfully, he set those up earlier, but he's got a crossfire from Mint. I'm not sure they're going to join that. At least Eclipse with the first kill here. Oh. Shuttle with the second. This is actually starting to work out. We could see a comeback from Rogue, but there's two heavy ACOG defenders left in the Nyx with the high mobility. They're going to have to hunt them down. You heard the phone calls just going off. Hopefully, he still has a logic bomb for the execute, so they have an idea who's on site. It was a problem. Rogue trying to fix it here by having the Dokubi on Slash, or Slash and the Jokubi. Same thing, right? Um, Hopefully. <laughs> Or Dokebi, as far as I'm told by South Koreans. It is a tricky one to say. It is. It is a bit. There you go. Even for me. Okay. But the Dokebi here for Slash definitely working out. It gives them information that now Rogue, you know, they can rely on it to just watch any people in the back and even get frags off of it. As Slash will get one shuttle with the second and last alive is Jarvis. He's done a ton of work here for the team and he'll find one in Eclipse. But look at the amount of damage he's taken. He ate the grenade. He was boosted up a bit beyond max health, right? No. He still had all stim pistols. Attackers are activating hmm. bomb diffuser. Must yeah, because there was a rook. It makes sense. There was a rook. That's right, he was extra he armored. 100%. That's why. That's how he survived the explosion. Super tank. There you go. Well, we'll see. He's got at least full health plus a little bit of boost to try and contest this, but four people to find. Oh, he'll find one. Try to spray from the side, but shuttle is ready for him. And that was actually beautiful. Instantly finding the head of Slash, but it's nowhere near enough what is required in the position. You can't really fault him for at least the try there. Rogue will pick up the round. I'll make it 6-5 a round away. It all hinges on this. To Rogue tie it and make it our first tie in the entire season for all regions. Or will DC take it 7-5? I think it's definitely a possibility. Possibility here, we see it go that way. Not gonna see Penthouse come out from Dark Zero though, so they're not gonna bring that out. This kitchen's gonna be the last one, but it is a. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see if they can bring it up because Rogue seemed to have figured out. Oh, hey, let's do a better job clearing from the reverse side that we don't need to. You know that we're not gonna be attacking from. So they attacked Hookah, for example, from below, and actually helped clear that out. And in doing so. They offered them the opportunity to have that clear to push in with multiple people. You saw four people pushing for the push instead of just two this time. You know, you typically see that two going in for that final push, maybe three. But having four people left alive to push in there made such a huge difference in them getting that off because there was so little people left to defend against it as well. Wow. Some On calls and Jarvis. Beautiful plays for them. The two Eclip clock players. Yeah, Eclipse and Shuttle. They're not far away from him. Eclipse just needs one kill and it'll be equal to Jarvis, at least in that department. Um, Han Cold with nine assists. That's it's pretty good. A lot of a lot of teamwork. Yeah, the definitely we're seeing a lot of good coordination. I would say though between even the, even the rounds where the teams lose, I think we're yes, seeing a lot of uh, of well oiled machinery. Yeah, a team a team Five that what was it that that Parker was saying? Uh, the team that plays together slays together. And I don't know how to feel about that. I'll be honest, though. So I'll leave it up to Twitch chat. Maybe, you know, they can decide for me. I, I assume you mean slays in the, in the Santa Claus sense. Yeah, as in, like, slay girl, that kind of Beyonce stuff. Oh, no. Nyx, unfortunately, dropped ah. out. Not sure if we're going to have a rehost or not yet. Uh, it was within the first 15 seconds, but we'll wait on an admin decision for this one. It's very possible. Yep. Not up to us. So we'll get ready for it, just in case. Yep. As uh, players will continue, there's new, no two Pojo Mans. So that would be ridiculous. Oh, looks like he's returned, but still may or may not have to do a rehost anyways. But as the time ticks on, that's more information that can be gathered about the defense as well as potentially the offense. So they have to wait for a decision. They can call for a rehost, but they have to wait for confirmation. Uh, we have the confirmation. There will be a rehost. So 
We have the OK as our admin team has verified. Hello. Well, that'll be interesting for Rogue because, of course, everyone has to pick the same site, the same operators. If they six pick, they have to pick them regardless the same and way. And if they don't, they lose the round. Yeah, that would not be a good way to lose a round. And I believe that has happened at least once. If yes, I believe it happened to Penta. Not great. But that means now the attackers of Rogue have a bit more information on the defense, depending on how well they droned it and how much they... Uh, they might have even gotten a little more sacrificial with the drones just to gather that information you know, pending the rehos. Yeah, because they kind of realized, okay, within the rule set, this should be allowed. So yeah, that's it was a risky thing to do, but... Yeah, again, we'll remind you, if there was no kills uh, early on and it's within the first 30 seconds of the round starting, not yeah. the prep phase, then you are allowed to call for a rehost, especially in this case, there was a drop. So we have the okay for the rehost. Yeah, if you're a Dark Zero, you don't want to get any spawn kills early on right there. Because then you might lose your rehost and you lose Nyx automatically. That would be great. So there you go. It's uh, the scoreline is currently six five, which is fairly interesting. I, I have to wonder. Um, you said you said last time it came down to a one v one to decide. Looks like we might just end up with a tie because this is a situation where you can have one. So definitely going to be close again. As I said, the only difference before from before is vertical being on the team now, and he seems to be doing pretty good. I see we've seen yep. some good entries from him as well. So yeah, I'm I'm hmm, interested in a few things. There's hmm. My, my biggest thing is, are Rogue getting a bit too predictable for Dark Zero? And I would like to at least have an interview with uh, Dark Zero or Rogue. If they that. tie, then it'll be neither, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so one of them's got to win for us to find out. Please. More. Well, only Dark Zero can win. Only Dark Zero can win. Oh, that's true, that's true, yeah, because they already got to the six. That's a very good point, yeah. So that's true, yeah, <laughs> only uh, only Dark Zero, cause, so there's no way to talk to Ranger now. Except for through telepathy. Is that a path thing? What's that? No. Oh. So, uh, it's, it, it'll Shakes be interesting my to head, see if my they head. can come back, though. I mean, I think Rogue definitely have the, the potential, and we've seen a lot of streaks so far. We saw three in a row from Dark Zero, three in a row from Rogue, in the, or four in a row from Rogue, rather, but then three in a row again from Dark Zero, so if the pattern kind of continues, then this is a rogue round coming up, and now they have the informational advantage. Not to mention, Nick's maybe losing a little bit of his flow. Mm. But you know, the some of the momentum shift could also affect Rogue now as well. If they kind of cool down for a second during that, gives extra time though to talk to Ranger. But then of course, there's two coaches on Dark Zero to talk to on that side as well. So you know, six and one, half a dozen in the other kind of thing at this point in terms of who might have the advantage. But either way, there's going to be a lot of thinking going on as they get the rehost underway. And a lot of information that has to be set up for the rehost. So this is going to take a while because, well, they have to uh, add all of those rounds of information to make sure the rehost goes correctly. Yeah. Which takes which, a while of clicking. Which is another thing we should very much praise our wonderful observer for. Yeah. As usual, Mercy likes a bit of praise here and there. And it's, you know, good observing. But also there's a lot of work that goes into making sure the rehost is set correctly. So, yeah. Yeah, we need to have to... It, it's a bummer when you have to rehost for a rehost because it's... You know, something slightly off. Yep. And the further it gets into a round, the more complicated that gets, and the harder it gets to make sure that it's accurate. You literally have to add like every single round, which I'm very happy. You know, we cast it back when yeah. that did not exist. Yeah, that was not fun. That was and of not course, fun. we do still lose the scores in terms of kills of all the players. So, you know, you, stats wise, you kind of have to go back and, and do a bit more manual work to adapt. Sorry, but, CGG. But it happens. You know, at least, uh, at least you can recreate most of it to make sure that everything else operates correctly from here. But this is the final round either way. So hopefully not a lot of information too critical to that. Because, I mean, I guess in theory, we didn't really need a lot of the information to be recreated because it's like, well, we know what bomb side it is. There's no rotation options that have to, to matter. There's no Very overtime true. It settings. is the final round. So you don't really have to have any settings, I would say, that that matter other than the fact of making sure that, you know, that they choose the right settings and the right operators. So hopefully they don't accidentally choose the wrong operator. Yeah, hopefully we're ready to go here as we're just verifying that all the settings are correct. Oh. And then we'll head we'll head in directly to coastline. I kind of miss Spain. We were in Spain in the summer. Oh. Valencia was nice, even nice. though this is like Ibiza. We have confirmation. There we go. We're going to go. All right. So here we go. Back to the kitchen. Same operators. But not doesn't have to be the exact same setup. Of course, they can move things like barbed wire, change what reinforcements they do. The actual setup that happens after the round start is where things can get tricky. Indeed. And uh, what I'm very curious uh, about, and this is something I wrote right now on my, on my notes, in round 11, 
We saw the Doka Attackers be played. Mm -hmm. And it was, I want to say, a bit instrumental to finding your opponent's positions, you know, holding them off in certain locations and trying to just choke them off one by one before you go for a plant. And you saw them just sixth pick to it, which is still secret information because because it was so early in the round during the rehost, it is very unlikely Dark Zero has any idea whether or not that sixth pick happened before the rehost. Very possible. But of course, he still has to do the same sixth pick. He doesn't have the option on it just because Dark Zero did or didn't know who he's playing as. But your drones don't have Reload. any identifying information to find out who he might be. And that is, of course, the advantage that the attacking side will have in this sort of uh, way. Yep. You know, it's very, I think it's necessary for us to highlight that, you know, yeah, you drone things out, you know what your attacking opponents are bringing to the table, the right? Attacking but it does give you at least some chance for both teams to kind of really rethink anything Indeed. they might need to adjust. Indeed. And of course, a lot of these setups start off a bit more um, default. And then as the round progresses, or maybe you discover what your opponents are bringing, then you'll try to reshape and remodel. We often refer to that a lot of times as pocket whatever. You know, you have a pocket ADS or a pocket mirror window, things like that. To be able to save, to adapt to what they need. No. Impact nades probably being the biggest example of uh, a pocket gadget that's very, very common to have uh, later into the rounds. I have my impact grenade always in my back pocket. I was wondering why you were sitting a little crooked. <laughs> Actually, I am. Oh, no. I need to fix my uh, my seat. You're right literally now. tilted right now. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, no! So close. He'll peek again and easily <laughs> will yet again miss the shot. Keep taunting each other at that point. Attackers have located a bomb. But you don't want to be that uh, attacker sitting outside trying to make that shot while he's just distracting you. Of course, the defenders have a time advantage. If you're Glass, though, that might be a different story. Vertical, though, being very careful about this drone. He doesn't want to give it away via sound, which is why you hear him kind of just creeping along as quietly as he can, but then jumping it there when he's a little impatient. You mention it, but yeah, there has been no glass, which on coastline is kind of... It's true, it's not banned. But this, that Latin America seems to be the region that is very yeah. dependent on glass in, in a lot of their strategies, or at least so excited about playing glass, they don't really want to change that up too much. Makes sense. They do have some of the best glass players in the world, so... Yeah. We'll talk about Latin America at it's least a, once. It's kind of a chicken and the egg sort of thing, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, they are doing a good job droning again, something we saw Rogue doing on successful rounds, which is setting up these drones and then having a good idea on how to execute, especially on site there. Having drones on site this early in the round is actually a very good thing for your execute because you have an idea. If you don't overexpose those drones and they don't find them, your execute could be much, much more effective. There you go. They're going to try to clear out the uh, security room here. At least Shuttle opening up an extra angle for himself just to keep his opponents on their toes inside of the room, as that position is a death trap for any attackers that wish to venture into it. Yeah, you definitely want to try and apply pressure as much as possible, even if it's just passive pressure by opening angles, opening... Well, there we go. Speaking of pressure, Jarvis finishing off his kill as well. He's been just so lethal in the dock as well as hot and cold. It's just dock seems to be a staple for Dark Zero. I'm so disappointed in that push there. Shuttle should not have gone in on his own, and you already see the ramifications of such a play. Slash looking down with one logic bomb already been used. 24 seconds on the clock, and it seems oh. like the round went down so quick. Nyx will find one hot and cold with a second. It's all up to Eclipse and Vertical. 17 seconds now on the clock for the push. Fire one another as Vertical is now at 50% health. The wall is completely soft. It's exactly what you need as the defense. Nyx will find one, but not the second. Five seconds in. Four, three, two. Eclipse solo will push into the bathroom and will go down. He'll trade against Mint. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, Dark Zero will take the round on defense and will take the whole game, 7-5 on Coastline. And I love that bulletproof camera. That's something that both Dark Zero and Rogue play consistently because that one in the back of the desk looks all the way down the middle of the, uh, the map and through onto the blue bar. It's a huge angle that you can play. And Jarvis, wonderful plays from the Canadian in this matchup. As of course, you can't really see all of the... Uh, the statistics that it's were here. It's the double digits, though, for, yes. for sure. I think I think you put up a total of 11 kills, if I'm not mistaken. That's. You know, I wish there was a pop-up that would tell me, hey, you're absolutely wrong. <laughs> I, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's a lot of people that, that can help make that happen. Including yourself. Yeah.